the car is going back together now since hammering away at getting this all done we had some little tweaks we're making like we're actually swapping out this intake manifold for a different one we're actually using the same wagner one we just got another one from them we're gonna modify something slightly on it and rather than killing this one we're gonna have a spare part of that was gonna be we're gonna be welding this whole seam together when you weld that all together it makes it so it never blows out and breaks or leaks but i mean we're talking about the charge pipes are going in we've got these fancy little i've done that 75 times thinking the bottom's bolted up I did like 10 times already. The bomb's still not bolted up, Jordan. It's still not bolted up. I did it 50 times. It's not bolted up because it has missing the, uh, the weld on the flange. Uh, oh, we're waiting for the flanges to weld idea. this on. The guys over at Spool Performance are sending me the right flanges. They sell turbo kits for these cars. I mean, you guys want to turbo one of these cars with normal kits. They do make them. We do sell them. And they're nice enough to hook us up with like little flanges to weld on to the charge pipe for my map sensor and air temp sensor. The turbos are back at home, right where they belong. I think I showed previously the charge pipes all got done. We use these little, these little quick, these are like knockoff little clamp thingy mobobbers. Massive front mount intercooler on the car. This is a factory transmission cooler relocated. We do have to make lines here to, to fit to back there. Nelson welded on new fittings down there. We did have that welded previously, but the fitment we could have been better. So we, he redid that. We do have a small issue, right? With these brakes, not with the brakes, with the shock. This area here is a little fat compared to the spring. And with this, the tire is gonna to touch it depending on the offset tire diameter I use. There's not a ton of room, so you're sort of kind of limited if you put a tall tire. If you put a short tire, it's sort of kind of okay. And I want a taller tire. So I reached out to guys at BC Racing. I ran their clothes on my F80 M3, it went 9-1 and it launched amazing. I had zero issues. I know people often say, what's the best coilover? What's this, what's that? Most brands, if you buy a custom coilover, can valve it how you want, put spring race how you want, give you whatever travel you want to make what you want. That's what I did. So BC Racing is going to hook me up with the proper coilovers that allow a small amount more lift in the front for potential weight transfer to the back because cars don't have crazy anti spot or anything like that. So we use some level of weight transfer to help and then hopefully not just drop right back down. We'll do their stuff in the back also. So I'm waiting on that coilover wise, but that is getting set up. ECU wise on the car. There's the ECU right now. For intercooler size-wise, I went with Treadstone. I think it's a 1260R. It's six inches thick, more than you got. 12 inches tall, it's big boy, it's big boy. As mentioned, we have a separate video on the entire motor build and breakdown. Every pound matters on this car. I don't think I'm gonna do Lex and Windows, but if you look at the fastest cars out there that are BMWs, whether it's an M340 or a 240, take a good look at them because all these guys have like the wipers, completely deleted so i was not trying to go to that level but i decided i changed my mind i'm doing it fuck it we're gonna make this the lightest g80 possible so i took the wipers off and i mean i know if you look at the interior it's also there future video we're gonna get into tearing the interior apart and stripping that down to absolutely nothing also this is as far as you can go of ruining a car as possible i would say so the further stuff that we can do weight reduction wise we will get there is cut up the doors and if you think people are ready on these cars are not doing that you're fooling yourself i'm not cheating i'm not lying I'm just telling you guys the truth. So if you think, oh man, Jordan's doing the most. Two things, I am doing the most. I'm doing more than your, your shop or your preferred person, probably. But there's GEDs out there ready to cut doors. There's ready GEDs out there missing wipers, missing braces, missing bars, missing the under panels like I rate to golf to get as light as possible. And I wanna be in that club. I wanna make it the lightest GED possible. And the reason why is because I'm trying to go faster than everybody else. So we got turbo wise also, we might change this up. I'm thinking about doing something a little bit bigger. This should make 1350, 1400 wheel. We got done on this soon. And then once I die, I don't see where we're at. If it's gonna be what I want, we'll leave it. If not, I'm gonna step it up. Cause my goal is high up. I was like, I cannot believe I bought individual paint. This is a $5,000 option for BMW. Just to have to cut up my doors and stuff. I'll probably buy spare doors, same way I did with a spare hood, instead of just chopping up my really nice car. Everything I'm doing is replaceable. Everything unbolts and bolts back on. Nothing is like cutting of the chassis. In terms of massive weight reduction, we actually have the front brakes going on too. They will go somewhere over there. They still make it onto the car. We have a hood painted from the body shop. This is not my original hood. I think I mentioned that in a different video. If it looks like we're close, we are super duper duper close. We are just a few AM lines, a fuel pump set up, maybe brakes, bleeding some fuels away from having this car start, drive, and hit the dyno. The car is getting buttoned up. This is like the final stretch, I think. The intake manifold is fully, fully on. We end up welding the intake manifold together because I don't like the idea of just having bolts. I feel like over time it can break or leak anything that's bolted like that. So it is fully bolted still. We removed the O-ring from the inside and welded it. 
Um, Wagner thinks that this is a great design, it'll last forever and work fine. They might be right. I just don't care about the serviceability of it. I got a spare one from them. I think what I'll end up doing that on this one, plating this so there's no gaps going around and then making this like flat. In my opinion, I think it's gonna help with power. I don't think a motor like this needs velocity stacks because like when you're under a ton of boost, I think it's gonna take the path of least resistance, which if it's a flat plate, whatever valves are open, they'll be that. So I think it's sort of a waste having those recesses around it. It may just cause a little turbulence. Maybe under pressure, it does nothing. Those will be sort of static areas with no movement and not cause any problems. But I don't think it's really needed or beneficial. We poured the inside throttle by a little bit after having it welded. Not the throttle by, but the adapter plate. We have my original ECU in it still. We have the other one on the bench behind me. We will put it in a flash to make it work. The brakes are done done. They look ridiculously, jokingly tiny. I mean, if you look at my hand, oh man. Yo, if my hand next to it, it's like, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like ridiculous. So with these brakes, I think the car is still gonna stop because it has super aggressive pads in it. If you want brakes like this, we have a link down below probably to the website and we have all brake options. They have street rotors, so like normal long lasting things. And then they have drag ones and they have these drag super lights and that's what I bought. Cooling system wise, normally this car has multiple rat eaters back here. Um, this vicinity and this vicinity, this whole area, um, it's all removed. So the reason why we, we simplified it a lot because we're not running an air to water intake map. We have this air to air. We, we got through pretty much everything and because there's no real we're not running heat lines in this car or ac lines currently so it made it even simpler so all these spots normally have barbs coming off down here there's a spot with a barb coming off that we put a cap on this side of not sure how great you guys can see that but this the cool lines are literally this into the radiator this into the radiator one t to the bottom reservoir one line to the top there one line here so it bleeds properly and that's as simple of a cooling system as we can make there's upgrade radiators that are out there but i don't really think it's gonna be a major issue heat wise on ethanol for a short blast if i was doing road racing i don't think it's like a smart idea um spark plug wise we went up with just a stock spark plug gap to like, I think like 0.015 or something ridiculous people will say that stock things are good for like 800 wheel no gap at all with these amazing coil packs I just don't want to play any games. I want to um, do saw once and not have a problem. The tighter gap you go, idle quality can suffer, but you'll have better and better chance of no spark plug under crazy power. I had this dump tube made that goes from the wastegate down to the floor on both sides, on both wastegates, but I'm not actually gonna use it. If you have a wastegate and the whole outlet's too small, you actually end up with something called boost creep. If you look at the flange compared to the pipe, oh, let's go see if I, uh, I'll walk away. We're extra room on the dyno at the same time. And I'm trying to talk. No. Somebody's cleaning this window. This window's filthy. So when you have a dump tube that's smaller than the flange outlet, it can lead to boost creep because the exhaust gas can't get out that that easily. So in my opinion, you should always just go bigger than the flange. So the flange is one and a half, go 1.75, two inch. Same thing, one flange, 1.75, go with two inch. Always go bigger, especially the more and more bends will create more back pressure and more boost creep. Nelson's going to remake me bigger dump tubes that hopefully don't boost creep at all. I want to show you guys something. But in terms of handling the port injection fuel on this car, I went with the Motive Reflex box. I've installed these on people's cars years ago, and I've also tuned these on tons of people's cars remotely. I never really have issues. Most of the problems seem to come from wiring related problems, but there definitely has been some behind the scenes software updates the guys at Motive have done for people. It is something that you can just buy. It's like $1,500 for this. A plug and play TMS harness. Um, and I, I bought this stuff. Plug and play TMS harness. And it just plugs in and works. So for right now, I'm going to do this. I know I'll make 14, 1500 horsepower with this with no problem. I'm not really that worried about that. And plug and play things are always nice. This saves like days. Also guys, part of this whole car and project and making it work perfectly is the tuning in. We mentioned before I had Factory ECU, I have a secondary cloned ECU, and I've thought about all the options I can do in terms of tuning it. I've tuned a bunch of different platforms lately, I've tried it all, and at the end of the day, the way that I'm gonna make this car work, perform flawlessly, and have all the safeties in the world is by using MHG tuning. It's hands down the best option on the market. The integration into the stock ECU with using a motor reflex, having all safeties, having the fuel calculation how it is, it's hands down. So we'll get into it more with a tuning video. I'll show you guys exactly how it works. Just let you guys know, like tuning wise, it's something to take into consideration. Um, especially new cars, you gotta mail the ECU out to Europe to Femto to have it unlocked. You gotta choose like what platform do you want before it gets sent out for most people. Um, MHG is the one you're gonna want. You're gonna see why. With working on cars, not everything always goes as planned. My radiator got damaged when I guess the fabricator was doing things to it. So ordering another one, not happy, like 500 bucks. In there somewhere, 
It doesn't matter where. It leaks. So we're trying to fill up the coolant because it's like the final steps oil coolant. Uh, oil wise, it's like driven. It's um, supposed to be really, really good braking oil. It used to be called Brad Pen. Now, charge pipe wise, we got these little fittings from guys at Spool. They make turbo kits and stuff. Great bang for the buck turbo kits. Um, they made little maps in their plan for me. This is actually not from them. I actually had this and we're going to use the one I had instead to put them on the charge pipe. We're also going to fix some pinhole leaks that um, the other guy, the guy that fabricated all the stuff, he told me with the leaks, he's like, just bring it back. I'll re-weld it. I'm sorry. Um, it had probably been boosting tested before it handed me anything and it wasn't. It is okay though. It's not in the world because I do these checks. I find things like that. But I mean, here's a home stretch. Also, I don't know what you guys think. Should I leave the camera on? The self-driving camera on my ridiculous G80 M3. It's going to drive me to, I don't know, on the parkway. It's really dangerous, but I leave the self-driving camera. Do I take it off? That way you see my inner cooler better. We did boosting tests. I also did a pressure test of the car, of the cooling system with a new radiator in the car. With $500 looks like. Um, there's no fan plugged in, but we're not gonna let it run that long anyway, but I think it's time to start the car. Hang on, this is still like fake, because I don't have my fuel system in yet. So even though the built motor's in, trans is in everything, um, trans fluid's in. I don't have the fuel system, so I can't really dine up for another few days. Grand A lot of people crank cars to start them and then crank it for mad long, crank it for mad long, then start it. Then I've heard people like I just did, just turn the car right on, never crank it because uh, the oil pump flows more at 1500 RPM than it does at 200 RPMs cranking. So it actually like you're cranking for like two minutes trying to build oil pressure at 200 RPMs versus like five seconds at 1500 RPMs. <laughs> Walk, 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 walk. 